Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we go over cross key lighting for a podcast setup. It's very flattering to the subjects and it's simple to set up. It creates a hair light and a key light all at once. On this one, I use two 300 Ds for the cross key lighting and some 600 Ds for some background light. I'll go over some false color overlays to show you how things looked. Let's get into it. Here's a breakdown of the lighting. We have two Aperture 300D Mark IIs with the Light Dome 3s with the 2.5 stop diffusion and a 40 degree grid attached. We also have Aperture 600D Pros with F10 Fresnels and barn doors with blue gels added for the left and right side background. And then in the center, we have an Aperture 600C Pro with 36 degree spotlight and gobo added. This was added right before the interviews were started, so it won't be seen in a lot of the BTS from the previous day. And here's how it looked once it was all set up. We have a couple of stand-ins to give you an idea of what it looks like. On the left, we have Danny, our DP, and on our right, we have Cindy, which is the producer for the shoot. You can see how everything plays in this world. The cross keys are doing an amazing job. They're boomed over. And let's jump in and see what everything looks like in camera. So this is from the FX3. We're running a 70 to 200. Where we landed on the shoot day itself was between 70 millimeter and 135 millimeter for the type. On the right side, I applied the Atomos false color LUT. This gives you an idea of the exposure, but it also gives you an idea of where the light is hitting. If you see the top of the head where the hair is, you can see we're getting some good levels that gives you separation from the rest of the hair. You could also look at the shoulder. We're getting a nice hit from the shoulders and on the right arm. And then overall on the face, you could see where we're getting all our light and it looks really good, a really good exposure, and it just has a great feel to it. And that's what's cool about the cross key is both lights play on both subjects, giving you some great looks. So here's a wider shot of Danny, and you can see how it's hitting his shoulders. The light behind him is hitting his shoulders, but then also in his hair, he's getting a nice hit. And then even on the edge of his face, on the left side of his face, it's actually giving him a nice edge. And then he's being keyed from the front from the other 300D that's behind Cindy. So that cross keying is doing really well to give them some great separation and a great look overall. This is Danny on the other side, and you can see it's just a very flattering look. Now we did go with darker on the fill side. We could have came back with a bounce. We could have applied some light to kind of bring up the levels, but this is the look he was going for. This was his shoot that he was the DP on, so he made the judgment calls on how he wanted it to look. And this was the look that we were going for. Now you see a blue light that's actually kind of catching the edge of his hairline. That was from the gobo and from the background light that we added the following day. That ended up getting corrected, but it was something that had to be dealt with very quickly when it was noticed. But it did end up getting resolved fairly quickly. I applied the false color light to the BTS shot here so you can actually see where the lights are hitting and what it's doing in the space. You can see how well the duvetine or the black curtain is actually absorbing a lot of the light and preventing stuff from bouncing around, giving us a lot of control. This was shot on the Sony FX3 in S-Log3. It yields an amazing image. When I'm on set, I have a monitor so I can look at false color but I also have a LUT applied so I can see what the final image is going to look like. I always have my favorite LUTs uploaded onto the monitor so I can see what it's gonna look like. And this is with just a simple LUT applied, nothing more, no extra grading, nothing technical done. I drag the LUT, I drop it in, and that's it. One of the things that stood out about this cross key setup was the catch light that was created in the eyes. It draws you in, you can see the twinkle in the eyes, and it brings the subject to life. If we didn't have a catch light, the eyes just get muddy and lost and you lose interest. You could even see it here in Danny's eyes. I'm going to zoom in right now and you can see the catch light doing its job 
right there. He's looking straight into the light right now and you could really see it. And it just has a nice pop. And because the light isn't too close, it's not very big and overpowering in the eyes. I want to know your opinion on the fill side. Is it too dark, too bright, or just right? We were filming athletes for the podcast setup. So I felt it was just right. I think Danny made a good judgment call on what he wanted. He knew the look that he was going for, and I think it felt just right. Everything came into play really well. We were able to achieve some great results, and I just feel that overall everything looked amazing. Now, if you see when I was going out into the wide, you've got to be very careful because where the lights sit and how low they are, you could catch some lens flaring. So we did make sure to have lens hoods on, matte boxes and everything to prevent that from becoming a big issue. And then here you see a little bit of that blue coming into his hair. We corrected that. That was from the gobo that was hitting the background and that was taken care of. This setup looks very boring when you leave the house lights on and turn off all the lighting we did. And this is what it looks like with everything set up for the podcast. False color applied to the before look and then false color applied to the after look with everything set up. Big difference. Because we did have a third camera as a wide shot, we had to boom everything over to keep it out of frame. We had the Aperture 300D Mark II with a light dome three, two and a half stop diffusion and a 40 degree grid boomed over with the Avenger 650 boom. You can see we actually had to remove the ceiling tile to get clearance in the space we had because the ceilings were low and that gave us just enough to get it out of frame and make it play real well. But that's something that we came across that we had to contend with. For the left and right side background, I ended up using a 600D Pro with F10 for now and barn doors with blue gels added. The 600D was creating a lot of spill, so I took a 24 by 36 cutter to cut any of the spill. I want to start featuring the people I work with more. This was Danny, the DP. Edwin was a cam op and he brought some extra lighting. And this is Cindy, our amazing producer. Filmmaking is a universal language. On this set, everyone spoke mostly Spanish. There was very limited English spoken, but I will tell you this, it didn't matter. We got the results we needed. I'm Peter Mokri, a Dallas-based DP, photographer, gaffer, with a one-ton grip band, full of aperture lighting, and I am available for hire. I'll see you guys on the next one.